Welcome back to Landing Zone Home. Well, today I think we all know who Superman is. Superman is invincible to everything except one thing, and that's kryptonite. Kryptonite takes him right down to his knees and he's worthless after that. I'm going to show you four phases of Airstream kryptonite with the most severe at the end of the video. There's chapter markings down in the video description, so if you want to skip ahead, you can do that. Well, if you're shopping for an Airstream, if you own an Airstream, or if you've had one forever, this video has something for you. And it may just be the most important Airstream video you ever watch. So let's start at the bottom. Third runner up, that is front end separation, also known as shell separating from the frame. This is a situation where the shell of the Airstream starts to come separated from the frame and it's most often seen in the front and it's most often on those models that have the front storage but it's not limited to just that some units have it in the rear and some units have it when there's no storage door possible this goes back many many years so it's not something that's just surfaced but it's something that the customers are just now recognizing and that's for one important reason that is, if you find it while you're in warranty, Airstream will fix it. If you find it after warranty, you'll have to pay for it and it can be thousands of dollars. A way to look for this is to check my video right up here. I explain what it is and how to go about identifying if you have it or not. The second runner up is the steps, the Airstream steps. Rumor has it, the engineer that designed those steps has since left the company but we're waiting for replacements. Those fold-out steps can be very tricky. It takes several times or several attempts when you first get your Airstream to learn the folding sequence and how to get it done, and then getting it put back up so it doesn't fall down is really a challenge sometimes, not always. But the real concern of the steps is the stability. I've found them not to be all that stable, that when you step on them, they feel kind of uh, mushy and it feels like your Airstream is giving just a little bit. That doesn't seem like a lot of an issue, but just enough to put you off balance. And we don't want to have any situations where we fall out of our own Airstream. The other situation is the way the Airstream steps are attached to the frame. There's some bolts that go up in there. And if those break off, I understand they're not real easy to find. You just can't run down to Home Depot and Lowe's and grab a couple of bolts and throw them in there. And in the more severe cases, when the bolts come out, you've actually got to take some rivets out and remove a plate in order to get in there to replace those bolts. So be careful with those steps. But what I do, I don't use the steps. I purchase some aluminum steps. They're portable, they're lightweight and I just set them down on the ground and man, they're solid as a rock. And when I get ready to go, I pick them up, set them right inside the door. And when I get to my next location, they're ready to come out. And if that next location is maybe a rest area or a truck stop, set them right down, no problem. They're good to go. So be careful with those steps. The first runner up kryptonite for Airstream, and you better believe it, it's the door. Airstream puts a lot of pride in their door and they immediately tell you how many man hours it takes to build the door and what's entailed, but there are many problems with that door. First off, if it doesn't close good, there's several reasons. It can be the alignment of the door, which is usually the most common reason, or the trailer is not level, don't have your stabilizers down, but getting the door to close good consistently is really uh, hard to do. But the real issue with the door is the lock-ins and lock-outs. Every week, watching air forums and watching Airstream addicts, I see several people get either locked in or locked out of their Airstream. Now, if you're locked in, if you have some tools, you may be able to manipulate that lock, and it's never the deadbolt that gets you locked in, it's always the door latch. 
And that's why I recommend in my videos on safety and security, never use that latch lock because it's unpredictable. But carry a flat blade screwdriver inside your Airstream, and that may be just enough to help you get in there and get that door latch open. There are videos on that. I recommend you search those out and watch them. Now, the other situation is stepping out of your Airstream for just a moment to get something and the door closes behind you and then you're locked out. That could really be a serious issue if you have pets left inside and maybe small children left inside. That happens frequently and that is really a safety issue right there. So carry a spare set of keys somewhere outside of your Airstream. We're not always gonna have the keys in our pocket or around our neck when we step out and it only takes one time for that door to close behind us, then you're gonna be locked out. So find some secure place in your tow vehicle or somewhere else. I'm not gonna offer up any specific places for security reasons. You find your own place, put your keys there so that you can get back inside your Airstream. I really wish Airstream would take this door situation a little more seriously because there's a lot of people locked out and if you have been locked out or locked in, please make a comment down below of this video and let's just see how big the issue is and hopefully somewhere down the road there'll be a fix to minimize the chances of getting locked in or locked out of your Airstream. I know you've been waiting for it and it's the mother of all kryptonite for the Airstream and it's the iconic aluminum shell. It's the outside skin of the Airstream that is really the kryptonite that can take your Airstream right to the boneyard and be totaled out. And here's how that happens. It doesn't take very much to damage the outer skin of your Airstream. Backing into a limb that looks like it's not that big, uh, maybe a lawn chair was left in the wrong place. I've seen people that's had just a shopping buggy at Walmart left drifting in the parking lot and it just run right into the side of the Airstream. And do you know what that can do? Just that buggy going into the side can dent in a panel, possibly two panels, and they're not always repairable without replacing the entire panel. The going rate for panel replacement is between four and $6,000 per panel. So it adds up real quick. Just two hours ago, I was at a rest area and a maintenance man decided to start cutting the grass no more than five feet away from my Airstream and he pulled up and cut it on and I immediately drove off and got out of there because just one or two rocks get spun off of that lawnmower and that's gonna be like bullets hitting that thin Airstream skin and it's gonna damage it. Now you heard me mention uh, the possibility of sending your Airstream to the boneyard. Well, it happens and what really is the biggest threat out there is hail. Hail damage to airstreams can be catastrophic. A hail storm can damage your airstream so severely that when the insurance appraiser takes a look at it, they may just total out your entire airstream. It's unrepairable. So at four to $6,000 per panel, if they had to replace five or maybe six panels, you see how that adds up real quickly. So hail damage could actually total your Airstream. I'm not wanting anyone to have second thoughts about their Airstream. They are great travel trailers. I'm talking about those and not the interstate motorhome so much because they're made differently. But the travel trailers are iconic as I had mentioned. They don't change a lot in appearance over the years and I think that's why a lot of people are drawn to them because it takes them back to the memories of yesteryear and looking at the old videos and movies that has Airstreams. Airstream is a great product, but you as an owner need to be aware of these kryptonite issues so that you can take corrective actions, be careful, and minimize any opportunities for damage to your Airstream. I cover a lot of these topics in my book, My Airstream Mentor, which is available on Amazon as a paperback and also as an ebook. If you want to pick up a copy, it might be a, a handy reference, not only for these issues we're talking about in this video, but for how to operate everything in your Airstream and how to understand the systems that's in there. You might want to check that out. 
I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I'd like to hear from you what you think about these issues and how they might have impacted you in terms of have you had any type of skin damage to your Airstream? Well, until next time, click that subscribe button and hopefully I'll see you down the road.